Equations with grouping. So this is like, instead of two step equations, it's like more, but it's the same thing. So as long as you're good at checking, you'll be fine. Okay, so number one is two over five X equals six. And so we can think of this fraction as like a group, right? So we actually want to think of it as like um, multiplying by two and dividing by five. So it's like two steps. So even though it's a fraction, do not, do not freak out on me. So we have this five on the bottom, so we're gonna multiply both sides by five. And then that will cancel the thing on the bottom, and then we're just left with two x equals 30. And then we're gonna divide by two. That's gonna cancel out, and we're left with x equals 15. So this one was like a two-step equation, like 5.2, except for it just looked grosser because it was a fraction. And then you can go back and check this one. You know, I would use my calculator to check this one. All right, number two. We have another fraction, but there's more. So 10 minus 5 over 6x equals 0. So this one has, you're adding the 10 and then you're multiplying and dividing right with that fraction. So this one has like three steps. So right, we're upgrading every lesson with more steps. Okay, so we're gonna, this is a positive 10, so we need a minus 10 from both sides. And then don't forget this negative symbol. Some of you are forgetting that. Negative five over six X equals negative 10. And then similar to number one, we are going to multiply by the denominator. So multiply by six to get rid of the denominator. And we're left with negative five X equals negative, wait, yeah, negative 60. And then we can divide by negative five. And then we get X equals 12. And this one, again, you can go back and check with your calculator. Obviously, fractions get a little dicey, but just go back and check. And you didn't have to do times 6. You could have done times negative 6, and then this would have been a positive 5. So remember, when you have a negative and a fraction, you can choose if it goes to the numerator or the denominator. But it can't go to both, so you have to just pick one. So in this problem, I picked it to go to the numerator. All right, for number 3, I want you to try on your own. We have 2 equals 4 over 3x minus 6. So if you're watching in the video, pause the video and try it. All right, so for this one, a lot of you found the first step pretty quickly, which is plus 6 on both sides. We have 8 equals 4 over 3x, and then it's similar to 1 and 2. So we're going to multiply both sides by 3. That makes the denominator go away, so we get 24 equals 4x. And then we divide both sides by 4. So 24 divided by 4 equals 6. And then we want to check it. So let's go back and check. So we have 4 over 3 times 6 minus 6. So this would be 24 over 3 minus 6, 8, which is 8 minus 6 equals 2. So that's what we wanted. So number three is six. Okay, four, we're going to start to do some of the trickier ones that are in groups. So for number four, we have two equals x minus four over three. And if we look here, this, you'd think this is a minus four, but remember when something's on a fraction, this is actually like a group. So we have a group and then we have dividing by three. So some people want to do the 4 first, but we need to do this fraction first. So we need to multiply both sides by 3. So we get 2 times 3 is 6. The fraction, right, we got rid of the denominator. So we have x minus 4. And now we can do the minus 4 because we've broken the group out. So this one we just do plus 4, plus 4, and we get x equals 10. And you can go back and check, which I would always recommend, right? 10 minus 4 divided by 3. 10 minus 4 is 6. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So always be checking. A, B, C. 
All right, two more problems. Five is going to be negative five x plus three equals 25. And so on this side, we have this group right here, and then we have a multiplying by negative five. So I'm going to show you two ways to solve it. So the first way, we're going to divide both sides by negative 5. And then we're left with x plus 3 equals 25 divided by negative 5 is negative 5. And then we can just subtract the 3 from both sides, and we get x equals negative 8. Okay. The other method that we could do is we could distribute. So we could distribute that and we get negative 5x minus 15 equals 25. There's lots of different ways to solve these as long as you do correct math. So then we can add 15 to both sides. We get negative 5x equals 40. And then we divide by negative 5. We get x equals negative 8. All right, one more problem. You're going to do it on your own. Negative x minus 6 over 2. Actually, this negative sign should be in the middle right there. So be very careful. Equals 8. So remember, when the negative sign's in the middle, you can do it to the numerator or the denominator. I would suggest doing it to the denominator, and it'll be easier to solve. So try to do number 6 on your own. All right, I'm going to show you both ways how to do this in case you got the negative sign mixed up. So it's easier if you put the negative sign on the bottom. So we're going to multiply both sides by negative 2. And then we get just the numerator by itself. And then negative 16, we add 6 to both sides, and we get x equals negative 10. So what happened if you put the negative on the numerator instead? Well, you would have to distribute it across. So that's why it's harder to put the, the negative on the numerator. So you would have gotten negative x plus 6 over 2 equals 8. Because the negative has to go to both the x and the negative 6. And then it's a simple solving. Negative x plus 6 equals 16 minus 6 from both sides. Negative x equals 10 divided by negative 1. x equals negative 10. So if we put the negative sign on the easier number, it makes it just a lot quicker. You're going to get the same answer either way. But remember, when you have a negative sign out like this, you get to pick. So pick the easier one.